and welcome. Karsten Spencer here. This is Flash Forum, enlightening entertainment for the new age, and we are continuing about what we started to talk about last week, which is evaporating the veil. Really, instead of trying to use our spiritual journey as trying to get out there, we're calling the soul home. And the tools that we're using, that I've been using, that I want to share with you this week are dream work and the presence process. Uh, dream work has been a big part of my life. I've done a lot of dream journaling. As I shared in last week's show, I had out-of-body experiences when I was a kid, which scared me, so those stopped, but I continuing doing lucid dreaming. Uh, and what I shared about in lucid dreams was my, uh, my practice of once I realized I was dreaming, not only flying, but I used to go to the supermarket and fly through the aisles and smash everything. And uh, so then we moved forward into my healing uh, as an adult, and uh, I shared about the memories that began to come up after I did this uh, dream workshop, after I went to New Mexico and did the past life regression, really to figure out uh, why uh, I had this foot injury that wasn't healing. The doctors had not helped uh, after going to my third or fourth doctor and just having to prescribe more medicine. I took matters into my own hands, went to the Light Institute that I read about in Shirley MacLaine's book where she talked about her past life regression and experienced these past lives. And the powerful uh, experience allowed me, the, one of the most powerful parts of the experience, I was able to, with each life that I remembered, with each lifetime, I was able to move to the end of the life, experience my death, and experience lifting up out of the body. And the interesting thing is, it was not unfamiliar to me because it was very similar to the out-of-body experiences I had had as a kid. It was similar to the ones that I began having again after I read Shirley MacLaine's book and took this dreaming workshop and stopped being afraid of what was happening. I understood it. Very similar, except it had one extra aspect to it, was that the connection to the body was so released that there was this sense of freedom and being embraced by this, just this energy of total love and acceptance. And it was definitely... Uh, affirmed in a book I read recently, actually while I was down in Brazil with John of God, uh, I had the, uh, the divine synchronicity to get two books on, uh, two audio books. One was Evan Alexander, Proof of Heaven. The other was Anita Morjani's uh, Dying to Be Me. Both were books about their experiences, uh, their near-death experiences of not only dying physically, moving to the other side and connecting with that divine spirit, whether you want to call it God or Evan Alexander called it Om. Uh, but not only having that experience of connecting with that and from their, for their point of view, having indisputable truth that there is more on the other side, uh, but also coming back to their body and in coming back with that new information both of them experiencing what even the medical doctors consider really miraculous healings. Uh, so to me, it affirmed the message I got while I was in Brazil, uh, going down there really for divine healing. I had a few minor physical things that I was, you know, sort of wanted to have healing around from John of God, but it was mostly spiritual healing to begin to live fearlessly from the heart, to get a clear uh, message and direction of being able to creatively share the work that I do, create community that is not just about healing. Healing is important, but we've all, a lot of us, have been doing a lot of healing work. It's time now to step into creativity, because healing is just a process. Healing is who we are, and I like to call it evolving or coming into balance. We're always moving into harmony, so there are, there's always more. Uh, but really stepping into fully calling the soul home, which we talked about last week, which is what the work that we're doing, calling in that divine creative part of ourselves, letting go of the idea that there's somewhere out there that we need to get and that what's happening now 
is we are pulling spirit divine energies into our body. The title of this book, which is through my research from the message I got from John of God to begin to be doing this dream work now with the community and with the intention that it's not about just having a lucid dream and being able to fly and experience all those other dimensions. That's wonderful. But my work has always been about purpose. Why are we doing it? I've had those experiences. I did that in my dreaming workshop. I've had some amazing experiences. And what it led me to was what I shared about last week, about this healing crisis with needing to heal my foot, going to the past life regression, through that process, connecting with my higher self, having now the courage and the support to be able to have the memories of the childhood sexual abuse, which I shared about and begin to go through that healing to clear what happens, what's been happening through the presence process, which I've gone through twice. We'll be doing it with the group again at the end of the month. The courage to move fully into these other chakras, out of the head, into the heart, into the emotional center, and clear out the blocked emotions that will allow us to be more present in the body and, from my belief, my knowing, allow us to do what Jesus Christ shared about to create miracles, as he said with his miracles, all this and more ye shall do. We're just taking baby steps into what it means to be conscious spirit inside this physical dimension. We are made in God's image, which means we're creators. So that's what this work is about, moving into, moving into the dream state, moving into that place where we go when we die. I mean, it's the same thing. We have access to this divine intelligence, to divine guidance, to deeper parts of ourself for other dimensions, uh, access to other dimensions in the dream state. We go there every night. One third of our life is spent lying down sleeping. So this is a chance to move into that area with consciousness, with awareness. People have been working with this. Here's another book I was led to. This is the Tibetan Yogis of Dream and Sleep. I have three or four books that are based in this work that the Tibetan Yogis have done, working with their dreams to really gain access to the divine realm and also to begin preparing themselves to, when they're ready to let go of the body, to move directly into their light body. Uh, let's see if I can find what it is in here that is so powerful. Oh, that's not it. Uh, anyway, I will share that of, w with you at another time, but it's about actual documented cases where these Tibetan yogis, these uh, holy, holy spiritual men who've been, and I just want to say that when I say holy spiritual men, they are human beings just like us. We are all holy and spiritual men and women who have all been going through our process. Our life is giving us the the work, the sadhana, the uh, process we need to awaken, to move into the state. If you're alive on the planet and if you're watching this, there's a part of you that knows we are on a divine journey. And it's not to get out there, it's to be more fully present here, to feel and own our power. And our power is creative power. Who are we? What do we want to create? For me, I want to create a community that is about healing, that is about visualizing a world that can be different, a world that can be without disease, both physical, mental, or all three, physical, mental, and emotional disease, a world where everyone has enough, everyone is honored and provided for, where there is no more war, we see no need to fight each other, it's not mine or yours, it's everyone has enough. So this is why I'm excited about moving into the dream world because it is, it's, it's our doorway that everyone has access to and through my research there's so much information out there. There's so much help available, uh, so many practices. So I want to read some of the wonderful things from these books. First I want to read uh, what Evan Alexander said. I read it last week. Uh, I think I got to this. But the first message he got as he moved into the other side is, you are loved and cherished dearly and forever. You can do nothing wrong. There is nothing to fear. 
just take a moment to breathe into that. What if that was true? Our dreams are a place where we can start to experience that. As I said, when I was a kid, I would love having these out-of-body experiences or these lucid dreams because, number one, I could fly. And number two, I could go to the supermarket and smash everything on the shelves. And when I, in my later life, had the memories through my dreams of the childhood sexual abuse and all this stuff began to come up, was what keyed into my physical injury. I didn't. I was. My body was not going to, going to allow me to move forward until I stopped and honored what was going on. Until I dug into the depths and began to remember and heal what had happened there. And of course, my lucid dreams as I was a kid was me finding a way to process that anger, that intense anger when your boundaries are crossed in such a powerful way that I needed to go through and smash everything in that supermarket. Who knows what would have happened if I didn't have that outlet to be able to go into the dream world and do that. And that's also as my healing began, people would encourage me, well, why don't you do this dream work? Start tra training people how to do that, working with people in the dream state. I used to say, well, you know, I was out of my body for so long, I'm really working to get into my body. And now that I've gotten into my body into a very powerful and deep way, I'm realizing it's time to open up and reach into that other realm now with the intention of healing, of bringing that energy in. And that's why when I was led to this book, you know, I was in tears when I began reading the introduction to, to this book because it was exactly the download I had gotten in John of God when I asked, what's the next step for my work? How, you know, where am I going next? How do I use my creative powers and my life experience to bring this, this uh, awakening onto the planet? And very clearly, I began getting it in dreams and deep meditations, and it was about working with the group, creating a community that connects not only physically, but in the dream world, working with the ancestors, with dream guides, together. We're working with those entities on the other side and the, those of us who are still here in physical form to create that heaven on earth, to do the healing that continues to, to uh, happen and needs to be done so that ultimately we can become the, uh, the gods and goddesses in physical form creating this, this new earth that there's been so much talk about. So here's what Anita Marjani has to say uh, in Dying to Be Me. I became aware that my consciousness was huge. I became everything. Now that I know the truth of who I really am about the magnificence of my soul and the reality of what we really are capable of, I knew that if I returned to my body and expressed the truth of who I really am, the cancer would heal. Now that, on a smaller level, is exactly what happened to me when I went to the past life regression and experienced my death and experienced certain lives that keyed into exactly what was going on with my foot, why I was afraid to move forward, helped me to get clear of who I was and stop making choices that were based on some false idea of who I thought I should be or of trying to impress my mother or my partner or other people, really get clear of what my journey is as I began to live my truth, my foot healed. It didn't happen all at once. It took a process of me listening to my body, honoring myself, moving uh, into my back into my life and into myself with compassion and love, which is exactly what both Evan Alexander and Anita Mirjani learned in their near-death experiences. They came to a new understanding of themselves, and both of them knew if they came back into their body, the healing was guaranteed. The healing had already happened through the understanding. They both had the choice that they could leave if they wanted to, but both became clear for both of them that they still had work to do here. And I believe, and I believe they believe this too, that part of their work was to share their story, was to share with the world, with our human family, this awakening that's happening all over the planet, that we are more than we thought we were, that it's not about getting to some place out there, but it's about bringing that divine energy in, and that there are so many resources and tools to help us do that. So uh, I want to share more about uh, what 
Robert Moss shares in his book, and I invite you to go and check out his videos because they're wonderful. There's also videos of Anita Merjani and Evan Alexander on the YouTube or online. So that's the miracle of this internet we have now, is all this information is there for you, and I invite you to explore. You can also go to my website where I will be posting some of these videos, and there's lots of, there's the miracle in three breaths, which I shared with you last week, and I'd love to take the time to do it, but I really want to get this information to you. So uh, here's what Robert Moss says in Dreaming the Soul Home. All true knowledge comes to us through, let me see if I can get this word right, ana, anamnesis, anamnesis, that rather difficult, tell me about it, Greek word means remembering. In Neoplatonistic philosophy, I got that one too, Neoplatonistic philosophy, it has a special spin. It means remembering what belongs to us on a soul level, on a soul or mind. Wait, sorry. It means remembering what belongs to us on the level of soul or mind before we came into the present bodies on this good earth. It is about soul remembering. So here we see that the ancient civilizations, uh, there was always a knowing that there was a what we call divine mind that there is a, a source of divine intelligence or knowing that is beyond our human brain. Uh, this is where, we're, where we have access to each night as we go to sleep. We also have access to it in meditation. Uh, we'll be using a lot of tool, tools. I haven't gotten to it yet, but he talks about the waking dreams and how we can work with dream interpretation, not from a psychological point of view, but from a way of working with it in community that we get clear of the action that this dream is calling us to take in our physical life that will allow us to open up to deeper creativity, higher guidance, and deeper understanding, and basically be more present in the experience of being alive. Uh, the other word that I want you to use, and I've been using it as I go to sleep, and I want you to practice this tonight if you're interested in some of this dream work. Our dreams and that dream life works on a very uh, symbolic and interesting level so sometimes just a word and I found this when I was doing Rick Stack's uh, dreaming workshop back in the 80s uh, that there's certain tools and triggers that can work to help you become more conscious in your dream become lucid in the dream call in dream guides the word is andinuk and you can look it up on the internet it's spelled O-N-D-I-N-N-O-N-K Andi Nunk or Nonk. And it's it's a uh, Iroquois word. I think it's Iroquois or, or Mohawk, but it's a Native American word that the shamans used that means the secret wish of the soul, especially as revealed in dreams. And I have found as I fall asleep, if I repeat the word Andi Nunk, Andi Nunk, it has been stimulating very powerful dreams. I had a dream the other night where I connected with the dream guide who in the dream I knew it was someone I knew so intimately and so close it felt like a long lost best friend, a best part of me. And as I woke up, began journaling, and that's another thing, really powerful tool, just start writing your dreams down, sharing them with people you know. Not with the need to have them interpret them, but just to put it out there. Uh, but I connected with this dream guide who, as I was writing it down, it was very clear that it was a part of, of me, maybe someone in reality that I'd known in another life, but it was a powerful aspect of myself that there was so much love and caring and uh, wisdom, but that the wisdom wasn't on a higher level. It was just a natural part of myself that was so wise and loving and so cared about me so much that whatever information that part would give would be the truth that I could trust and take home and that it would be for my best, uh, my highest good. Uh, and talking about community and how important it is, I want to share some of these with the time that we have. I'm just going to read some of these uh, places that I have marked because I just want to share this with you. Um, so the secret wish of the soul especially as revealed through dreams. Andinok, 
That's the word. Uh, again and again in dreams, our higher or greater self comes stalking us, giving us the chance to forge a connection that may bring more soul or spirit into the body than there was with us before now. So that's why this book was so exciting to me, because it really is about using the dreams to draw our soul back home, to be more present in our life, to experience this physical reality as the joyful and amazing uh, Garden of Eden that it is. Uh, and that it's not separate from the dreams, that this is just another aspect of who we are, and that the dream world and the waking world uh, are so intimately connected. That's another thing I've found as I've been doing this work. And one of the, one of the other main things that I asked for when I went to John of God was to be able to see more clearly, to heal my vision. And part of it was I was hoping to be able to throw away my glasses. As you see, that didn't happen. But what happened is something more powerful and much more valuable as far as I'm concerned. I'm seeing more clearly the world what it's about, who I am, and how I fit in. And part of it is being expressed in this work and the way it's blossoming through the presence process and this dream team that I'm putting together. But what's also wonderful is that I am seeing more clearly, maybe not more clearly without my glasses, but life seems and feels more vibrant. When I talk to someone and speak with them, their skin seems to be translucent, their eyes sparkle, there's, I see, oh, uh, I guess what you'd call as, uh, as an aura, but I see energy emanating from around them. Uh, and what it reminds me of is when I first started doing the dream workshop with Rick Stack in the 80s, and uh, he gave us a technique, so here's another technique I want to share with you, wonderful, if, because a lot of people do already have lucid dreams. They have dreams where they suddenly realize they're dreaming, and don't be surprised if after watching this show, you begin to have some of those. So what you do, the minute you recognize that you're, that you're, you're dreaming, number one, sometimes you need to test it out, you not, might not quite be sure, because sometimes you can be kind of confused in the dream state, because most of us when we're dreaming, we don't realize we're dreaming, it's a whole other world that we're just in. To recognize that you're dreaming, you have made a connection from the dream world and this waking world. So a powerful, a powerful channel and connection has been forged. So that alone is very powerful. The way to test it out, see if you can fly. Will yourself to lift up off the ground, see if you can. Other techniques are if there's someone who in your waking state you know has passed on, but they're there in the dream, voila. Clear indication you're dreaming. So once you realize that you're dreaming, if that happens for you, focus on your hands. Look at your hands, your dream hands, and allow yourself to really focus on them very clearly. It focuses all your inner senses into the dream world in that conscious state and will allow you to just strengthen your ability to manipulate through the dream, to call in a dream guide, to say, oh, I want to visit uh, uh, the past, go back and visit a past self. There's so many techniques in these books about how you can creatively use the dream straight one state once you become conscious. But the other thing that I have, the, the one thing that I experienced when I first had that first lucid dream where I was able to use that technique, it focused me so clearly in the dream state that I had an experience of being more present and alive than I had ever remembered experience, experiencing. This dream, although it was a very simple dream, I was just at a friend's house, I went outside as soon as I looked at my hands, realized I was dreaming, I just had this desire to go outside in nature, and the sky, the rose bush that was there, the butterfly that then floated through was so vibrant and alive. The air itself seems to, seemed to sparkle with consciousness and life. Not only were the colors more vivid, but they actually had uh, an emotional aspect to it. I could feel them. It was such a blissful experience that it just stuck with me for days afterwards. And I noticed when I came out of the dream that the waking world was more vibrant, more alive, more what I'm seeing more and more these days as I continue this spiritual work, doing the oneness blessing, chanting, meditating, teaching my yoga classes. It happens often to me, for me while teaching yoga, especially if I 
if we do the miracle in three breaths a number of times, either before or during the class. Uh, and what I've also been doing lately is taking a moment to look at my hands, even right here, and you can practice this on your own. Look at your hands and focus yourself into your hands and try taking that deep conscious breath, drawing consciousness into your body and moving out of the head. And then take a moment to move your hands down and just not look at but feel the room around you. The breath is this sea of consciousness that we live in. And that's what I felt in the dream world. I remember dreaming after, I, I mean breathing after I did that, that focused on my hands. And I was breathing in the experience. If we breathe into our body, notice the breath awakens the head. It moves through these upper chakras, but immediately moves into the throat, the heart, the solar plexus, and literally, if we allow it, we can feel it moving all the way down into the deepest part of our body. And notice just focusing on that gives you a sense of expanding into the moment, a feeling of letting go, of moving out of the head. It can be sometimes disconcerting or scary for people. They say, oh my God, I feel lightheaded when I do that. That lightheaded feeling is letting go of the ego need to control, and this is what the world is, and it is expanding into the here and now moment. We talk so much about the power of now, being here now, the present moment. The present moment is always here waiting for us to experience. And when we go to sleep, that's partly what this is teaching us. We don't have to leave the present moment. When we're in our dream world, we are in the present moment. It's an expanse of who we are. So a uh, couple of minutes left. Let me see how we're doing here. Uh, we're pretty much to the end. Let me finish with just one quote, whichever one I happen to turn to. Let's see. Uh, It's about growing the soul, becoming more than we ever were before, embodying more of the greater or higher self. It requires the willingness to take the creator's leap and bring something new into our lives and our worlds. A myth we re-quicken in our minds and our lives brings us creative juice and serves the soul. Dreaming we find the myths we can live by, the stories that put soul at the helm of the ship of our odyssey. So owning that our dreams are not just something, some aspect of our mind that we, you know, trying to process life when we go to sleep, that our dreams, we're moving into a divine realm that is as natural for us as this waking realm, and that we can draw guidance, we can draw sustenance, and we can remove the veil that it's two separate worlds. What I love to do, another technique I will end with, we just got a few seconds, I hope they don't cut us off, is to approach your waking life as though it's a dream. Everything that happens, it has a symbolic meaning. Everything that shows up in your life is your soul helping to awaken you to that greater self that you are. So Rather than feeling victimized when stuff comes up that you don't like and blaming the outside world, ask yourself, where's the gift? What is this telling me? If my soul is in charge and is always showing me what I need to see, let me, if nothing else, just feel this without judgment. And that's the presence process really helps you to do that. So go to my website for more information. Thank you for watching. I will see you next week. Love and light always. Namaste.